Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. I recently reviewed the Two Trees SK1, a super fast Core XY filament based 3D printer. You can check out that review here if you haven't already. In my review, I commented that while the hardware itself is solid, I ran into a few issues with the software that runs the printer during my tests. The day that I wrapped up my video, I found out that Two Trees released an updated version 2.0 of the firmware. So let's install that firmware and see if Two Trees improved the experience with these updates. Let's quickly recap the issues I had with the old firmware. First, there were incomplete translations with English. A few of the dialogues were still in Chinese, including the starting dialogue and the emergency stop dialogues. Second, you could not connect to a Wi-Fi network if the network name included certain special characters like spaces. Finally, I ran into a few situations where the menu would stop responding. The menu icons would react to my touches, but it would not switch to the new menus, requiring a restart of the printer. Those are the issues that I'm hoping to see improved upon. Updating the firmware is a three-step process. Two Trees has a video walkthrough that goes into much more detail, but it involves downloading a new firmware onto the SD card, inserting the car into the main board, and powering on the printer to update. Then you can turn off the printer, remove the eMMC storage, and flash the updated operating system onto the eMMC storage and reinstall it. Finally, you download the new touchscreen driver onto the SD card, install the SD card into the touchscreen's control board, and power on the printer. It'll take a minute to update, but then you can remove the SD card, assemble the printer back together, and you're good to go. So let's check the localizations first. Did two trees fix the translations? Well, yes and no. The starting menu has been fixed. It now correctly shows the English starting instead of Chinese. However, going through the menus, I ran into this strange situation where if you go to the filament load and unload menu, the fan menu at the top turns into the German word Lufter. It only happens on that one tab, which is strange. All the other menus seem to be fixed though. Thankfully, they did fix the Wi-Fi name problem. I was able to connect to my Wi-Fi network with spaces in the name. This means that I can now fully use the Fluid UI to remotely control the printer. They did change how the USB menu works. There used to be a red dot on the menu tab when the USB drive was detected. This dot does not seem to appear anymore. And when viewing the files on the USB drive, the file names would scroll from left to right and display the time and filament used. When you switch pages, it would reset the file name scrolling to start again. In the new firmware, the time and filament used have been removed, and the name scrolling isn't reset when you switch pages. This can make it harder to read file names as you're scrolling through. Finally, my history tab seems to not work anymore. I can see the history remotely using the Fluid UI, but not on the printer itself. The firmware doesn't appear to have changed anything about the print quality itself. Prints look identical before and after the firmware upgrade. So I think most of the changes were tweaks to the UI, as opposed to kinematic changes for controlling the printer. And that's a good thing though, as I was already very happy with the print's results of the SK-1. So let's wrap up this video. The upgrade from version 1.11.19 to version 2.0.0.21 fixed some of the bugs with the previous firmware while introducing a few new ones. I'm happy to be able to connect to my normal Wi-Fi network, but the missing history page is a bit annoying. I haven't experienced the UI becoming unresponsive yet, but I couldn't find a way to reliably reproduce it before, so I cannot tell for sure if that's been fixed or not. So I'm left feeling similar to how I did in my initial review. The SK-1's hardware is amazing, but the software still needs a few bug fixes to really get it working smoothly. I'm hoping that there will be a few more firmware releases to resolve the couple of new bugs that I encountered. So thank you for joining me while I tested the new SK-1 firmware. If you enjoyed this video, why not check out my other 3D printing reviews, like the Superfast Creality CR-10 SE that I recently reviewed. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.